The amount of training that was going on was pathetic. Marathon runners were trying to prepare for a marathon by running 30 miles a week. Track runners were running a couple of times around the track on a night and calling that their training. They said women couldn't run more than 200 metres. I think Arthur Lydiard, in this respect, was ahead of his time. Lydiard didn't accept accepted practice. He, he, he looked at each thing and thought, well, this is stupid. And just because people had always done it that way didn't mean he was going to do it that way. I knew I needed to talk to Lydiard. Lydiard's approach was revolutionary. He was developing these theories and was about to change the sport dramatically. At that stage, a lot of the, the athletes only used to train twice a week and, and very little training. And Arthur says, you've got to do it every day. So I went out every day and I did it twice a day. People would say when we first started to do the distance type running that um, we shouldn't do this because our hearts would be affected. And I suppose they thought perhaps that if we we went too far, too fast or whatever, that our hearts might explode or something quite peculiar like that. Fellow athletes and other coaches would say, would, would say you're mad, your heart will pop. You're, you're crazy, you won't, you won't live till 30. What are you doing? All right. That's something you should know. I was approached one day by a man from another club. I'd been with Arthur for about three months. This guy said, Barry, he'll kill you. He'll kill you. I used to give them a tremendous amount of hard work, and particularly on a Sunday morning, I used to do that Waitara 22 mile run. I was still amazed how those guys could, could get over that, uh, up that hill. It was very, very steep and very gut wrenching. Waitara was our first real challenging test of being a Lydia disciple. 35k. Uh, with lots and lots and lots of hills in it. On the way home, you, you, your legs are throbbed and ached, and you sit down and you just <clears throat> you, you, you just cried almost through the the pain, but you wouldn't give in. It was a bit like religion, wasn't it? You had to be a bit of a believer. You had to want to be inspired. These athletes were putting in hours of training. They wanted to believe that this was the right thing to do and he was quite a charismatic person and instilled in that belief. We've started to follow him as a guru, if you like. Someone to believe in and to have faith in. If he said it, I believed it. I could feel the strength coming. It didn't get harder, it got, it got easier. We were just in, enjoying ourselves. It was just, just bloody marvellous, you know. Success breeds you. You've, you want a club title, then you want an Auckland title, then you want a national title, and then it goes on from there. We weren't talking about being an Auckland champion, New Zealand champion. Lydia was talking to you about being a world champion. It is easy to to sort of feel, oh, uh, you know, I'm I'm up against all the uh, the the best athletes from these uh, these big countries, the United States, for example, and uh, and I'm just from New Zealand, and they've got uh, all the facilities and so on. Well. Arthur was somehow able to make light of that and say, you know, we're, we're doing the right training. 
we actually have the advantage with, the, with our approach. And uh, that was, uh, that's powerful. You know, the Olympic stadiums are, uh, they have to be intimidating places in terms of uh, atmosphere and pressure and so on. I think I was able to be calm about it and somehow shut out that uh, temptation to sort of soak it all up and, and get excited about it. The plan always was with Snell, if he can be with them at the start of the home straight, no one's going to outkick him. He's fast. But he couldn't do it. He was a bit tired and didn't have the confidence to do it, so he hung back. I thought, well, this is it. I, I, I just don't have it. Yeah, all the indications were that, you know, he wasn't going to win the race. Arthur was just virtually a nervous wreck. And here goes Holmes of Belgium going up. Snell is on the rail, but he can't get out as they come around the curve. I couldn't carry out the pre-race plan. I wrote off my middle chances. But as we came around the last bend and into the straight, I have this distinct memory of the rest of the field sort of slowing down and it it sort of it, it actually energized me and Bell on the inside he may have difficulty getting through here he's trapped right on the inside there and found the Belgium We couldn't tell we were sitting if Snell had won it or not. And Lydia was quite sure that Snell hadn't won the race. I actually had to ask Roger who won. And he knew because he was looking over at me. And uh, he said, you did. Is a, an exhilarating feeling. Sort of a small time New Zealand boy, and uh, I'm now the, uh, the gold medalist. I had uh, pulled it off. But it just chopped the will <laughs> that he could beat the best 800 metres runners. Everyone was excited, including Lydia. Yeah, there was no one more excited than he was. And the amazing thing was he had told numerous people that for a whole week in Rome before the races that Snell would win it and to put, <laughs> put their money on Snell. Everything was focused. All I had to do was to put our operation into plan, which in its day was quite different. 
three laps out from home, that I should drop in a very fast lap, as fast as I can go, and then keep my lead to the finish. I have no doubt, even at that moment, I thought, this is not going to be easy. But for all the factors I put myself through, the experience I had taken, I knew that, that this, this was my day. This was the day that I would not accept defeat. He was rated amongst those who could win, but um, I think that all sort of faded over the first many laps as he sort of trailed along at the back. Those who were watching probably thought, oh, well, he's not going to make it. It was certainly a sight to see because I'd never seen an athlete who ran with what I would consider a handicap. I'd never seen that. And so your first thought was, well, you know, he's here, but what can he do? He only has one arm, one useful arm. The plan was to run a fast lap about three out and hang on. And Halberg starts to make a move as they come down towards the straight here this time. Halberg starts to move up on the outside. He's moving up now into third place. And there's Halberg going out on front now. He's going away with a terrific burst. Murray, having worked his way quietly up, goes bing, bing, bang, gone. He fires in the sprint and he's gone. He's opened up a gap of five, seven, ten yards over Grodowski of Germany. Albert comes out of the back straight, round the curve. He's got 15 yards ahead of Grodowski of Germany now. Grodowski is just flying low, but Halberg looks over his shoulder. Halberg looks over his shoulder as he comes into the straight. And Halberg is getting a terrific cheer from this great crowd here. There must be 90,000 here today in this huge stadium, and Halberg is getting a terrific ovation. I must admit that it was uh, gruelling, to say the least. I was all right after the fast lap, but to hang on for another two laps was, was hard going. It's a pretty courageous uh, tactic uh, to do because it can, it can backfire. And the question was, was Murray going to be able to hang on? And they, they did respond. The German Brodowski was certainly closing. So that was pretty tense. They were cutting me back, cutting me down. And I guess in the last 300, my mindset was simply, you're destined to win here. Don't, don't falter, don't fail. The last 100 metres was simply a matter of saying to myself, just let me stay upright, just let me stay on my feet and moving forward. And when you get there, you can lie down. Wow, man, what has happened here? Some, something very special has occurred. And the most amazing thing to me was he's laid out on the infield, bam, and there's this withered arm just lying there. He was now an Olympic champion. An appeal to the Olympic gods. Just let me win. 
I looked up at the scoreboard and it was not uh, an elevation to a, a different sphere at all, but a very human moment. felt as though we owned the stadium. It was impressive. To share an hour in the Olympic arena like that, and both to win, how could you uh, not feel as if you were more than just brothers in arms? You were joined at the hip. <laughs> 